Super Smash Bros. is coming to the Nintendo Switch this year, and by some great miracle, appears to be a brand new entry in the series rather than a port of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. It's a miracle that Masahiro Sakurai would grace us with his mastery another time, let alone do it in less than four years. As ever, with a brand new entry comes a flurry of excitement over who will join Mario, Link, and company in battle. Not all characters are equal, however, so we've crunched the numbers and have weighed the definite odds of the characters you want to see entering a match on Final Destination with no items or Smash Balls and 5 life stock and only Fox anyway, so they're not even invited. Just don't actually check our math, please. There was no math. ARMS is the first new IP of Nintendo's Switch-era catalog not that long after the inciting of the Splatoon craze for the Wii U and had a little while to satiate Switch owners' multiplayer cravings before the arrival of Splatoon 2. With Splatoon's Inklings being the first confirmed new brawlers, the next obvious speculative choice would be Nintendo's freshest faces in the ARMS cast. The odds get a little boost with ARMS already being a fighting game, so they can make that leap to this party platformer brawler pretty easily. Rayman actually has quite the history on Nintendo platforms. His most recent appearance in Rayman Legends was originally planned as a Nintendo exclusive. Losing that kind of exclusive eventually burned the Wii U for eternity, but Ubisoft also seems to want to have a good relationship with Nintendo in the wake of the success of Mario Plus Rabbids, and the just-announced releases such as South Park The Fractured Butthole. A pretty convincing leak a few years ago also indicated some interest in seeing the character in Smash Bros. Rayman's platforming history can bring a pretty large variety of moves, stages, and easter eggs to the table as well, but it will all come down to convincing Ubisoft to let them do it. The possibility of Crash quickly floated around online as the Insane trilogy was revealed to be coming to the Switch. However, it's also seeing releases on other platforms, so this feels more like Activision maximizing profits as they are known to do. While this is the first time the original games will appear on a Nintendo platform, Crash has been on Nintendo consoles starting as far back as Wrath of Cortex in 2001. Most of these were multi-platform and never really established themselves in Nintendo's own history, so while Crash's spin attack might be cool to see, he doesn't see seem like the kind of character to make an appearance, though fans would really like that. Just as Luigi is vastly different from his brother Mario, while Luigi is very different from basically every other character in the franchise. He's lewd and romantic, yet charming and quirky at the same time. We can't help but adore the biggest character out of Mario's cast. He is the life of the party. His taunt would be crotch chops. Have him walk exactly as he does as an assist trophy. All of his attacks can be sports tricks. And need a final smash? Waluigi was the villain in Dance Dance Revolution Mario mix. Come on, you know you want to see that. Make it happen, Nintendo. Give the people what they need. The lead protagonist in the newest Xenoblade game, Rex, is a bit of a departure compared to Shulk, who was a newcomer in the last Smash Brothers. Rex could still be a sword user, but would be able to flourish his moveset with the fact that he's actually partnered with another character, Pyrrha. They wouldn't really swap out as much as Pyrrha can appear mid-combos, and that would set Rex apart from the rest of the sword-using crew. On the other hand, Shulk could just stick around and be a perfectly good rep for this newer RPG series in Xenoblade, but Shulk is also so bad and should go away. I'm really feeling it! A creation of Smash director Masahiro Sakurai, Viridi is the goddess of nature, similar in design to Politena, but sarcastic and much younger. She cameos in the Kid Icarus stage in the Wii U version of Smash Brothers, and it is clear Sakurai is going to put his own characters in these games whether you like it or not. Viridi's nature-based skill set would set her apart from Politena, while even being able to borrow some of the other goddesses' support powers from Uprising on 3DS. It seems more likely that we'll see at least one more character from that game joining this roster, and our money's on the edgy hippie goddess. You know, Sonic has been in two of these now. He and Mario have been to the Olympics a few times together at this rate. I agree, it's time to think about starting to take this relationship to the next level and letting one of Sonic's friends join the party, but only one because oh god, most of that roster is bad. That said, Knuckles being a significant gameplay difference from Sonic while fulfilling a similar purpose sets him up to be the best choice. Tails could fill this role too, no doubt, but functions in a Sonic game as a slower Sonic with better recovery, and that doesn't seem as fun to include in a Smash game. On the other hand, Tails doesn't have an unfortunate and uncomfortable association with a racist meme. 
A traditional samurai character from a niche NES title sounds like something Smash Bros would be all over, and you'd be right. Back when Super Smash Bros for Wii U was in development, Sakurai strongly considered making Takamaru a character in the roster, but decided instead to make him an assist trophy because the game Mysterious Murasame Castle is not particularly well known in the West. However, between a guest appearance in a couple other games and a virtual console release of Murasame Castle, that is less the case now. Additionally, there was a time Fire Emblem games weren't localized and many credit Smash Brothers for that changing. On the other hand, do we want that many Murasame Castle games? Maybe. Resident Evil 4 is one of the most acclaimed games of the series, or ever, and it originally released as a part of the GameCube's Capcom 5 titles. With his flat puns and wannabe hero mentality, the Leon of RE4 would be a beautifully troll-like addition in the colorful brawler that Smash is. Capcom has already shared characters from their other two major franchises in Mega Man and Ryu, so why not the other one? The only catch here is that if you're not using the exact Leon from that game, why bother? His characterization changed drastically in future Resident Evils, and that's just not as interesting as the Leon from RE4 would be. Look guys, we're not getting Solid Snake back, and this would be a great way to get over that loss. So we're gonna just opt to include whatever husbando or waifu you want from Fire Emblem. Because there are enough Fire Emblem characters in Smash Brothers currently, and if anything, characters like Marth should probably retire and finally let the likes of Lucina take their place. We all have that one character we really love, but trust me, they all can't be in there. But I'm sure there will be at least one or two new ones. Okay, fine, Undertale is in fact coming to the Nintendo Switch. Undertale also seems to have quite the fan following in Japan. Neither of these things mean Papyrus or his brother Sans are going to make the leap into anyone else's games, much less Smash Brothers. It'd take a whole lot of determination for any indie game character to break the barrier separating them from the rest of this cast, especially ones like Papyrus and Sans, who are the core fourth wall breaking characters in an already super postmodern game, that to put them into Nintendo's own postmodern franchise would be really confusing. Also, could you imagine the internet flame war that would erupt if this happened? Because we remember when all of GameFAQs fell apart because Undertale won a game of all time vote once, and gaming has enough to deal with right now. I don't want to be that guy, but we already have Mega Man and I thought as a whole Smash fans were against clone characters anyway. All joking aside, Shovel Knight has been huge on Nintendo platforms and was even the first to get an amiibo not produced by Nintendo themselves. They are very much aware of the character and his popularity, and he has a much better chance of showing up in some way in a Smash game than a lot of other characters thrown around, so we're putting Shovel Knight in here. We're definitely on record with being fans of Cappy's characterization in Super Mario Odyssey and definitely would like to see him go on in fame beyond the one game. However, as a ghost hat that has to be kinda thrown to do anything kind of makes him a complicated character to design an attack set around. It wouldn't be the strangest idea though if you remember Charade from the Soul Calibur 2 filler cast. That kind of worked. If they did this though, it would be one of the more weird things that Smash Brothers has ever done. Or maybe it's just the more obvious answer in that he's already in Mario's own attack set and Mario has the hat on already. It's probably it. What's that? You've never heard of Captain Rainbow? That's not surprising seeing as this particular captain only starred in one game on the Wii that was never localized outside of Japan, so there you go. Captain Rainbow tells the story of Nick, an actor who plays a tokusatsu superhero who uses yo-yos, and when his show stops being popular, he travels to a magic island to make a wish for more popularity, encountering other forgotten Nintendo characters like Smash veterans Little Mac and the aforementioned Takamaru. Alas, Nick's dreams were never truly realized as the game sold out absolutely terribly in Japan, and Captain Rainbow is all but forgotten. For what it's worth, the game was pretty good. And now you know about a yo-yo wielding tokusatsu Nintendo character. And you want more of that, right? Because we bet you Sakurai also does. Total meme pick, you caught us. Bubsy originated on the SNES during the time everyone was trying to make their own Sonic-style character. While this character has a bit of a reputation for being disliked, Bubsy's first outing did well enough to bring a sequel out quickly, and a resurgence in his popularity began when they tried to get two games greenlit on Steam. A new title launched last year, and while that wasn't on a Nintendo platform, its release might be indicative that it is time for a homecoming. Or it's possible that resurgence was just the internet taking a meme way too far and thinking what could possibly possibly go wrong. Well, internet, everything. Absolutely everything went wrong with that, and you should be sorry. And our last pick is... No. Nope, nope, well, nope, we're not doing that. Nope, I'm done. 
please, please, please stop doing this. It's not funny anymore. I'm done. I'm out. Done. Onions! Vamos! Hey, this is Evan. Uh, I'm the video games editor on theyoungfolks.com, and this is kind of a new thing that we're experimenting with, where we're just kind of taking our written articles. Uh, this is one of Travis's on theyoungfolks.com, and uh, adapting it to video form so we can publish it for you on YouTube and uh, Facebook. And if you like it, please, 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 please let us know. Um, and we want to see if we can actually produce more content like this. Uh, I kind of missed the boat on. Uh, Smash Brothers videos because I was working on it and uh, my power went out because I live in New England and New England sucks. Uh, so I apologize for that. And uh, if you have any feedback, you can always get in touch with us on our Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And we have a Discord server. Uh, you know, it's T Wife official on almost everything. And if you want to support our articles, please feel free to check out our website, theyoungfolks.com, and subscribe to our YouTube channel where we publish, uh, you know, our, our Twitch podcasts and uh, Game of Thrones podcasts and stuff like that all the time. Cool. Bye.